Hello and welcome to another episode of Technically Analytics. In today's episode, we're going to discuss what the hell the Mariners are doing. The Mariners have recently made a few trades and signings that have been pretty confusing because the management recently commented that um, they wanted to cut down on strikeouts. So we're going to find out through these trades if they really cut down on strikeouts or if it was just eyewash. So we'll see. So the first trade is um, Mitch Hanniger and Anthony Discalfani from the Giants were traded for Robbie Ray. So Robbie Ray went to the Giants and Mitch Hanniger and Anthony Discalfani came to the Mariners. So first let's discuss Mitch Hanniger who is a he's a right fielder. He He's a right-handed. He's been in the league for a while. He's been in the league for about seven years. Uh, interestingly, he has about two years left on his deal, one year this year, and he has a player option in 25. Uh, so, and he was, he played for the Mariners uh, two years ago. So, he's 33 years old, uh, and, and when you look at his stats, uh, you can see that he, he's played kind of inconsistently, but when he has played a full season, it's been pretty decent. Uh, the two years he played a full season, 2018, 2019, or 2021, he had MVP votes. He was an all-star. Uh, so this guy, when he plays a full season, he's really good. Now, the claim that they're trying to cut down on strikeouts is a little bit strange because when he plays a full season, he has 148 strikeouts and he has uh, 169 strikeouts and then every other season that he's played he has 81 in 2019 over 63 games he has 65 in 57 games and 61 games the last two years but overall he's a great hitter like most seasons he's above average he has a good OPS plus he's a pretty good slugging percentage not last year he really struggled I think he was hurt a lot but he does pretty decently he can hit home runs usually. He hit almost 40 home runs in 2021. Uh, and that's it's pretty decent. But only six last season. So he needs to step up his hitting game. Now, one way to look at strikeouts is strikeout percentage and see how much he checks out compared to his homer and his his walk rate. Uh, 28%, which is quite a, significantly above the MLB average, which is 22 so he's he definitely strikes out more and his his home run percentage has been better even like if you look at 2019 he hit more home runs even though he did strike out 28 percent and he walks quite a bit too which is good which is also good but eliminating strikeouts isn't really what mitch hanniger is helping with i think i mean i understand why they probably traded for him because he was there before he played pretty well for them and they needed, they probably, they, I think they needed an outfielder too. So, because they traded Kelnick. And when you look at his salary a little bit closer, you can see he's got $20 million this year. And then he has a $15.5 million option next year. So, he could opt out if he has a good season this year and he could go somewhere else. Or he could stay for two years. So, it's a good, it's a good deal for him and it's kind of a good deal for them. Uh, now, Anthony Discofani is a pitcher. He's right-handed played for the Giants uh, for some of his career. Uh, we'll see that in a second. He signed through 2024. He has one year left on his deal for $36 million. Nine years in the league. Uh, he is 33 as well. And when he has, a, he has an interesting career. He started out in Miami and Cincinnati. He's been with the Giants for the past three seasons. It's three seasons. It feels like it's been longer than that though so uh, for whatever that's worth uh and you can tell he's just a journeyman pitcher like every couple seasons he'll have like a really good season or every other season have a really good season and he's due for one i think because last two seasons have not been so good but he's due for a good season soon um and i mean he's he's an innings eater like he and he's eating innings up for them it's not I guess he was hurt in 2022 and but when he when he is healthy and he plays his full season he he's an innings eater he can help you eat those innings uh 
gets he gets a good amount of strikeouts. He's not like an ace type. He's a journeyman, middle of the pack kind of guy. Probably your fourth or fifth starter. Uh, maybe even a long reliever. I think that's what the Giants will use him as. We'll see in a second. Um, that they're gonna use him as that. He doesn't walk too many guys. I mean, he has had trouble with walks in the past, but keeps his walks relatively low. Strikes out a good amount. You know, it's not it's not ace level, but it's not like bad. Uh, and he the hits it, it can depend on the season. Now the Mariners also traded they traded Robbie Ray to the Giants for these two guys. So this Robbie Ray is a pitcher. He won the Cy Young in 2021, I believe. Yeah, 2021. And he he's left-handed. He's 32 years old. He's been in the league for about nine years. He signed through 2026, five years, 115 mil. So he has three about three years left. And so Robbie Ray has a very up and down. He's he's had a long career before he won the Cy Young. He played in the league for like seven or six or seven years before he did. Oh, in Arizona when he pitched in 2017, he had a, he had some Cy Young votes. 12 strikeouts that season per nine. And he did a 2.89 ERA. So he had a good season there. Almost got it there. But then he actually did win it in 2021 with Toronto. And that was a really good season. He His whip was league leading. His ERA plus. League leading in strikeouts. League leading in innings pitched. League leading in game started. And in ERA. So that's how you win a Cy Young. You dominate all the stats. And he did exactly what he was supposed to do. And he did okay in 2022 for them. It wasn't a terrible season, but it wasn't quite as good as his Cy Young season. And then 2023, he dropped a stinker. He was hurt. Had He had uh, Tommy John surgery, so he's still injured. So the Giants are getting an injured former Cy Young winner. I mean, we'll see when he comes back how he looks. If he looks good when he comes back, then maybe it's a good trade. I, I'm not sure. But see his contract. He's owed... 23 million this year, then 25, 25 million for the next two years. He can opt out after 2024, but I suspect he's going to need to put up a good season before he can opt out of anything. He's not going to want to opt out yet. He's not going to get any money if he opts out when he's bad still. So, yeah. Now, looking at the Giants lineups, uh, this is their pitching rotation, rather. You can see that they have their starting pitching set and they have their their bullpen set and then they have Robbie Ray right here on the bottom on the injured list uh so I think he's gonna slot when he's healthy he'll slot into the starting lineup he'll probably place one of these young guys Harrison or Wynn maybe whoever's pitching the the worst probably will get replaced by him get him to the bullpen so we'll see what happens and have Ox Cobb on their injury list I like it for the Giants. I think that it's it's kind of a low risk move. It's only three years. He can opt out. He's probably gonna opt out. I mean, if it's a good season. So if you get a good season out of him, that's great. If he opts out, okay, fine. Don't have to pay him the money. Like it's it's all good. Now the Mariners made uh actually before we get to the Mariners again, uh the the hitting lineup without Mitch Haniger, right? Um I think that they were able to trade Hanager because they did sign the Korean outfielder Jung Hoo Lee, who is probably gonna play. He's gonna play center field for them, and they're gonna replace Hanager almost like a one for one. <clears throat> I don't know if it's gonna be like a. I don't know how much of a replacement he really is for him, but they're gonna miss Hanager's power for sure. I mean, I think even though he only had six home runs last year, I think he's gonna. He usually hits like 20s, so they're really going to miss that. I don't know if Lee's going to hit 20 home runs, though he is capable. Uh, so the next player we're going to talk about is uh, from the Rays, because the Mariners made another trade that's kind of weird. They traded with the Rays. It was a one-for-one -one swap, Luke really for Jose Caballero. So... Luke Riley from the Rays. He's a outfielder and first baseman, utility guy, left-handed, throws right. Been league for he's still a rookie actually, and he kind of came out of nowhere. He just started playing in 
he started with LA and then he got traded to the Dodger or to the to the Rays. Uh, he played for the Dodgers in his rookie season. Did okay. Like it wasn't amazing. Kind of just got like a taste going 33 games. Then in 2022, we had 22 games, did a little bit better. And then in 2023, the Rays gave him a chance to start fully play 118 games. And he took advantage. 19 home runs. He had 249 batting average, 333 on base, 490 slugging, 824 OPS, 124 OPS, uh, 126 OPS plus. Uh, really good season. Kind of came out of nowhere. This guy, he said, hit home runs. So, I mean, I could see why the Mariners wanted to trade for him because he was, he was a good, he was, he showed some promise for a guy that only had, what, like 50 games under his belt before that, before he played 118. So he basically has like a full season now that you can look at. So if you look at his 162 game average or over three year, even over the three year period, he has 22 home runs, 57 RBIs. He's hitting a 233, 319, 436, 755, 108. So he's just above average. Pretty good. Pretty decent for a player like that. And the Mariners traded Jose Caballero, who's like a utility infielder for them. Uh, he, I saw him play in the Baseball World Classic. Uh, so, World Baseball Classic. So he's a rookie as well. And he has even less experience than... Then Rayleigh, he's only has one season under his belt, but 104 games for Seattle. He had 26 home runs, or I mean, he had four R, four home runs, 26 RBIs. He did a 20, uh, 221 batting average, 343 on base percentage, 320 slugging, 663 OPS, and a 90 OPS plus. Not too bad. I mean, not. 100 is average, so he's a little below average. He's going to need to step up his hitting a bit. I'm assuming his defense is pretty decent, so that's what they're counting on there. Now, if we go to the Mariners lineup and we try to figure out what in the world they're doing, um, honestly, I don't know, because like I said, Mitch Haniger, when he plays a full season, he still strikes out quite a bit. They got rid of Eugenio Suarez, who struck out a lot. And they got rid of some other guys that struck out, like Kelnick. He struck out a lot, too. They traded him to the Braves. And they brought in Hanager, Rayleigh, uh, Urias, and Gar Mitch Garver, who I think is a good signing for Ke for DH. Uh, and I think their lineup is pretty decent. Like I like their lineup overall. I think it's going to gonna do pretty good. They have some nice power in it. And then on the bench, they have... You guys that are pretty that are some utility infielder outfielder guys not bad i mean and they're pitching i mean i don't think they're gonna miss robbie ray that much like if he's healthy maybe they don't trade him but they have luis castillo they have logan gilbert and they're they're pitching actually their pitching rotation and bullpen were some of the best in the league they had some of the highest ranked pitching and bullpen in the league for a lot of stats so I think adding Descalfani is kind of just like a depth piece. He's going to start off as a long reliever in the bullpen. Maybe if someone gets hurt, he starts He starts a few games. But overall, it's a, it's a depth piece for them. Hanniger, I think he adds some pop to their lineup. So, but I, well, my thing is, I'm just confused what they're doing. Like, I know they said they're trying to cut down on strikeouts, but I don't think Hanniger really cuts down on the strikeouts. And the other moves they made, I don't know if those guys cut down on it either. Uh, like it doesn't show strikeouts here, but Garver, I, I'm not sure. We'll go over this in the offseason, uh, or the preseason profiles. We'll see, like, like what overall, if they're if they if this is all their moves that they make, then we'll see where it lands. I mean, maybe they make some more moves, maybe they have more plans to make more moves. Uh, we'll see. So, make sure to like and subscribe. Thanks for watching. And tune in next time for more baseball.